How's it going, everybody? I'm Jay Roselle. Corey, WTF is up with his BS. I'm Corey Zay, and I don't know, Jay, but the name certainly does fit. Hey, Corey, did you know Strang was an Angels fan? No, I didn't. Do you know his sister's single now? Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. This is WTF, the Wiffle Ball Task Force, and this remains to be the only show you need to watch for anything Hesfield Wiffle Ball related. We're sporting these today because we heard it's pretty fashionable. On today's show, odds are I'm going to kill Corey in our new segment. The odds may have changed on a very important upcoming game. And we're going to try to have a special guest on the show. But first, bring in the rundown! You like that, huh? Alright, the Hess Division defeated the Land Division 11-4 in the All-Star Game on Thursday. Uh, this game featured two run knocks by my boy, Aussie, James Strang, and a three-run jack by George Stedman. Nick Giordano uh, pitched three scoreless innings and was MVP. Corey, what do you take from this game? Well, besides Chris Horadell robbing my boy, Aussie, of a home run, and Chris Hess of a home run, I take that uh, the game was a little closer than I thought it would be. The Lamb division, uh, pitching-wise, pretty much matched the Hess division. Hitting-wise, pretty much matched the Hess division. And uh, it makes me a little uneasy about the playoffs right now. Yeah, I think we, we really learned. Tad O'Neill, you know, it was his coming out day. He was throwing gas. He's T.O. definitely T.O., uh, hardest throw in the league. Rizzo's curveball was nasty. A lot of people thought that this game was going to be a 15-run game. I thought it was going to be close the whole time, and it was. 11-4 is not that bad, and the Land Division proved themselves to, that they can keep up with the Hess Division. All right, moving on. This Tuesday, the Braves faced the Angels in their extra game this year. Uh, the entire complexity of this game was changed when we received breaking news that Nick Giordano uh, has now a torn ligament in his pitching elbow and will not be able to pitch for the rest of the year. Uh, you know, what is, How does this affect this matchup? Well, it greatly affects the matchup, and it greatly affects the Hess division if he's gone for the season, as previously reported. Um, I'm sure that, that the Braves will send out Stegman, and I'm sure Stegman's a, an okay pitcher, but he's no Nick Giordano. Giordano's numbers are very, very impressive. It's a huge loss. You know, I, I think in the long, I think I still have to give the Angels now this matchup just because they're sending out Josh Longo. But in the long run, the Braves are not that bad off because Gir or, uh, Stegman, in 2006, he was a runner for the Cy Young Award. He had three wins and an ERA of four. I think in the long run, they'll be all right. We'll have to see. All right, keep, keep tuned this Tuesday. But other games that are featured this week... Uh, Monday we have the A's versus the Nationals. We're scheduled for Tom Tierney versus Tad O'Neill. T.O. That's right. Hard pitcher versus hard pitcher. I mean... This, this could be a classic. I'm going to be there. You should be too. You know, I think I'm going to have to give the edge to the A's here. I'm going to grow a sack and I'm going to say T.O. upsets Tom Tierney. You know, whatever, that might be your opinion, but your opinion's wrong, I think. A must win. <laughs> a must win for the A's. I don't it think is. you can argue that. It is. All right, uh, another matchup to look out for this week, the Braves versus the Reds. We're set for Chris Hess versus CP Colin Phillips. How do you feel about that? Destruction? Or destructed. Exactly. Uh, Hess has a pretty good scouting report on CPD, I'm sure. But the Reds are dangerous at Hess Field. Dangerous. They are. Uh, anything can happen at Hess Field in that small ballpark. But I think I'm going to take the Braves in this one. I am going Aussie with at least one home run, though. That, that very well could happen. All right, we'll be right back. We're going to try and get our special guest. Don't go anywhere. This is WTF. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Unfortunately, I couldn't get our special guest that we wanted in the studio today. I heard he doesn't really like to do interviews. So we're here on location in Scotia to try and get an interview with the greatest living species, Anthony Aussie Ospelmeyer. Let's try and sneak up on him. It looks like he's working out here. Excuse me, Mr. Aussie. What do you want? Uh, we'd like to just quick uh, do an interview with you. Nah. Are you sure? Also, oh, don't do interviews. Okay. There, there's thousands of fans out there who would love to, to Listen, see Listen, also, don't care about the fans, so just stop right please, there. Please, please, Mr. Aussie. Uh, if you could just have a minute of your time, we'd really appreciate the fans. All right, all right. Really all right. Appreciate all right. That's what you want. Thank you very much. Let's make this quick. All right, guys, I'm here with Anthony Ospelmeyer, also known as Aussie, the greatest living species. Aussie, you have people bowing down before you on the forums. How does it feel to be the newest fan favorite in Hesfield Wiffle Ball? Well, I've always been the fan favorite, uh, and people have always been bowing down to me, so it's nothing really new for me. 
All right, that's good. I don't know. I, you, you seem like you know, you're pretty charismatic because you 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 know you kind of a uh, guy small in stature, yet you still have a huge pop in your back. You know, where do you where do you get all that power? What's your what's your workout regimen like? Well, I uh, eat three orders of chicken quesadillas from Taco Bell before every game. I drink two glasses of muscle milk, and then I shoot up Balco before every game. Cool. That's quite a formula for success. All right. Uh, you know, uh, what do you think about the Reds and, uh, you know, where your team's going to wind up this year? You know, you guys have already had a great first half. You upset the Cardinals. You guys look like you could be going with some places. How do you, how do you feel about the second half? Yeah, yeah, the Reds are all right, you know, but I'm the reason that the fans show up to the Reds games anyways. I'm going to be the rookie of the year this year, and uh, I might even leave Cincinnati when I'm done with it, so we'll see how it goes. All right, we, we wish the best for you, but, uh, you know, where do you come up with a name like Aussie? Actually, uh, one of my one of my coaches gave me that nickname. Uh, why do you say it like that? You think I gave myself nicknames like Strang, calling himself the Strangler? Think I'm some kind of corny oh, jabroni no. or something like that? No, no, not not at all. But uh, I don't know. You you also seem to you know refer to yourself very often as the greatest living species. You know where where does that come from? Well, I guess it just comes from the truth. I am the greatest thing that anybody's ever seen, anybody's ever heard. I'm the best looking person that anybody's ever seen. I mean, look at this. doesn't get much better than that. But I got a question for you. What What does WTF stand for? Oh, well, obviously... It doesn't matter what WTF stands for, <laughs> right. as long as you people know that this year, Aussie will be the Rookie of the Year without a shot of a doubt. Charmelo, he's nothing compared to Aussie. If you smell... What the Aussie... Is cooking. Oh wait, Aussie, Aussie. Wait, uh, wait, hold on. I got one more question. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're leading the Hess division in home runs as a rookie, which is very impressive. Can we, can we see what that power swing of yours looks like? You want to see my swing? Yeah. Oh. 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 We'll be right back with more WCF.